Hi guys, Mark here. Thank you very much for joining me. In this video, we're going to be tying a barber's pole knot onto a pinned mandrel. Here is the knot that we're going to be tying. It has an over one, under one sequence, done in two different colors. The characteristic of this knot is that it has parallel diagonal lines in two colors giving you the barber's pole pattern. The knot is square shaped, so you can also use it to cover spherical items such as golf balls or pool balls. Now, there are two rules that I would apply with this sort of a knot. First off, double up the passes, which is going to bring out the pattern quite a bit more. Secondly, the knot is tied onto an even number of pins. In this case 10, but you can also use 12, 14, any even number. Our pinned mandrel is a PVC pipe with an inner diameter of about 2 inches and the outer diameter is about 2 inches and 3 eighths. We have two rows of pins, a bottom one and the top one. Each row in this case has 10 pins. Our pins are about 2 inches and 3 quarters apart from one another. So the distance between the bottom row and the top row is about 2 inches and 3 quarters. The pins are laid out in a zigzag pattern. As you can see, the pins are also numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. For a doubled up version of the knot, tied onto 10 pins, we're going to need two pieces of paracord 550. Each piece is going to be 13 feet long. To make the tying process a bit easier, I'm going to be using a lacing needle. First off, let's set up our mandrel for tying. Take one of your cords, fold it in half. At the middle point, place half of your cord under the rubber band, half on top of it, so this part here is going to be our working end, which we're going to use to tie the knot. The standing end is going to be used later on to double up the knot, so for now, we are only going to be working with the working hand. Attach a lacing needle onto the working hand. Place your cord to pin 1. We start our tying by moving from pin 1 at the bottom to pin 6 at the top. We're going to be using every other pin both at the bottom and the top. So at the bottom we started at pin 1, the next one is pin 3. So from pin 6 to pin 3 passing under this strand here. Hook around pin 3. Every time we travel from top to bottom, we go under our strands. So, from pin 3, we move 
the pen eight, so every other pen. Previously we used pen six, the next one is pen eight. Pass over this strand here, hook around pen eight. When moving from the bottom towards the top, we go over our strands. So from pin 8, the next one is going to be pin 5 at the bottom. Passing under our strands. From pin 5 at the bottom, we travel to pin 10 at the top, going over our strands. From pin 10 at the top, we move to pin 7 at the bottom, going under our strands. From pin 7 at the bottom, we move to pin 2 at the top, going over our strands. From pin 2, we move to pin 9 at the bottom, going under our strands. From pin 9 at the bottom, we move the pin 4 at the top. Finally, from pin 4, we move the pin 1 at the bottom, again traveling under all of our strands. Place your working hand under the rubber band. And we have our setup with our first chord. Your second chord is set up pretty much the same way as the first one. Fold it in half. Tuck half of your cord under the rubber band. So the working hand is used to tie the knot, the standing hand is used to double it up. Attach a lacing needle onto the working hand. Position your second corded at pin number 2. The second corded is going to start at pin number 2 at the bottom and move to pin 7 at the top. Again, we are going to be using every other pin. So the first one is pin 2, then pin 4 and so on. On the top, we start at pin 7, then pin 9, 
pen 1 and so on. So, from pen 2 to pen 7. When traveling from the bottom towards the top, we go under all of the strands from our first chord. So under everything, the pin 7. From top to bottom, we go over all of the strands from the first chord. When reaching our second chord, we go under it, then continue over 1. From pin 4, we're going to move to pin 9. Again, traveling under all of the strands from our first chord. When you reach your second chord, go over it, then again under one. From pin nine, we're going to move down to pin six. So, over all of the strands from our first chord, under all of the strands, from our second chord. From pin 6, we're going to move to pin 1. Again, under all of the strands, from our first chord, over all of the strands from our second chord. From pin 1 to pin 8 at the bottom. Again, over all of the strands, except the ones from the second chord. From pin 8 up towards pin 3 at the top.
from pin 3 all the way down to pin 10. So over all of the chords from pin 10 to pin 5 at the top. From pin 5 all the way down to pin 2 again. like this. Tuck your working hand under the rubber band and we have tied our knot. So this is the barber's pole knot. Now we're going to double it up. Before I double up my knot, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to take my working hands and pass them under one right next to the standing hand. Then remove the pins. After removing the pins, take your first standing hand Use it to double up your first working hand. So simply follow it through the knot.
When you reach the working end, using your standing end, you have effectively doubled up one chord in your knot. Take the standing end of your second chord Repeat the process, so follow your working hand. When you reach your working hand, using the standing hand, you have doubled up your knot. Transfer it onto the object that you want to decorate, tighten up your knot, and you are done. So guys, we've now demonstrated another knot that you can tie on a pinned mandrel. It's easy to do, it looks great, and it has many uses. Thank you for joining me, and see ya next time.